Hi guys, welcome back to Sonic Audio. Um, the last video was about uh, setting up a Raspberry Pi to act as a mu music player. And it was reasonably successful with the fairly inexpensive ha uh, upsampling hat that I had on it. Um, very musical, but not very refined sounding. So I decided that uh, I would spend some extra cash and take care of what are reportedly the particular problems with the Raspberry Pi as a media player. Those are um, the level of jitter on the GPIO output pins that connect to an onboard DAC or whatever you may be using, and also the quality of the power. The quality of the power is quite uh, dirty internally. Uh, and that reduces sound quality, obviously. So I invested in a couple of, uh, well, actually three items so far. Um, this, as you can see, this is the Raspberry Pi. It's got this quite heavy uh, heat sinking on the top, which is absolutely needed. Um, but as this little cooler uh, heat sink comes, it's impossible to fit uh, the uh, GPIO cable uh, without using an extension, and I don't like using the, the, those sorts of adapters. So today I, I took it all to bits again and I uh, filed away enough material so that the cable connects directly to the, the, the pins. So I'm happy with that. These are the two of the relatively expensive parts. There's a chap on the DIY audio forum uh, who goes by the handle of Ina Canada. And he, over the last few years, has been building various um, uh, re re reclocking and uh, isolator boards. So this bottom board, not that you can see much of it, but if I hold up to the camera, you can probably see the clocks uh, in there, which are used for the reclocking. And the top board is uh, I2S2 HDMI uh, output, with the idea being that the uh, Pi player will be self-contained in the case that I have um, and it will feed a signal to the DAC uh, via an HDMI cable. So hopefully um, that will uh, result in the best possible sound quality. So those are the, the bits, the two bits that compose the music player. The other thing that I have here is what's called, an, by a company called Allo, the Shanty Power Supply. Now this thing is, I guess, relatively inexpensive for a good quality linear power supply. It certainly weighs a lot. The finish is, is quite reasonable. Um, I did have a look at inside it, and I'm not going to do, take the top off again today, but I uh, did have a look inside it. Slightly disappointed to find out that um, the caps that they use as, they used as part of the power supply, and there's about 30 of them? Um, were Lelon branded. Now, I don't know about anybody else, but uh, you know, Lelon tend to feature quite a lot in bad caps forums. Um, so that was a bit disappointing, but again, if it, as you go on the net and read through reviews, some people say they actually work quite well, some people say they have a habit of blowing up. Um, and the way that the item has been constructed, they've actually glued the main PCB into the case, which is quite odd. So dissembling it to replace the capacitors um, could be a bit risky. Uh, and the other thing is that there are uh, two transistors about here and another two about here. Uh, and there's no real heat sinking for those. Um, they have put uh, heat pads between them and the case, but they're quite thick. And from what I understand, is that's not really going to be that conductive. They're not held in place by anything other than the pressure from the transistors. Um, so, yeah, a couple of disappointing things, but overall, uh, build quality seems quite all right. The quality of the transformer looked very nice. It's an R core, which again is supposed to be the best type to use for this sort of thing. Um, and the actual construction of the board with the SMD uh, components uh, looked nicely done. So that's basically that. So, moving that to one side. This is the case that I'm going to be using. It's an old micro uh, ITX case that has hardly seen any use. 
quite attractive. It's a cube and there's a, a gloss cover that goes over the top and the side, so it's, it's an attractive looking little thing. Um, and there's certainly plenty of space inside to mount the, the items um, using the uh, uh, there's a back panel opening for a standard ITX motherboard, but that will also be of use to me in fitting, oops, amazing, in fitting in these two or three boards. Um, the other thing that, uh, as you know, uh, the uh, Pi 4 runs pretty hot and passive cooling simply isn't enough. However, I have lots of spare CPU fa uh, uh, computer fans, this one being quite large. But that will sit right there. Um, it can be run at uh, oops, it can be run at a low speed, um, as I have a, a controller to do that, um, so that uh, it will cool the pie without it being in any way too noisy. So that's basically it for just now. I don't have anything to say about sound quality because it's a work in progress. Um, overall results with this thing, I have used it without the HDMI output, uh, but using the ITS outputs and connecting it directly to one of the DACs I have. And I felt that um, for the cost involved in buying the, uh, the reclocking board and the shanty power supply, the increase in performance over using the little uh, uh, AK4137 AK resampler board was not really worth it. However, I bought the HDMI output board, I have an HDMI input board for my DAC arriving perhaps today, um, but fairly soon anyway. And um, then I'll be able to get it connected all up to the good quality DAC, or the high, highest quality DAC that I have, and uh, start doing some listening. So that's it for now, just a short video. Um, please uh, 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 subscribe to the channel if you want to see some more of this. Um, and if you'd be so good as to like the video, I'd be quite happy about that. Um, okay, that's it for now. Bye.